Good morning. Good morning. Secretary Clinton, my colleagues have focused on your relationship with the Ambassador Chris Stevens uh, and why you sent him into Benghazi in 2011 as part of your broader Libya initiative. Um, but it's not so clear from everything that we've reviewed um, that you had a vision in Benghazi um, going forward into 2012 and beyond. Um, it appears that there was confusion and uncertainty within your own department about Libya. And quite frankly, Secretary Clinton, it appears that you were a, a large cause of that uncertainty. And um, we've seen all the day-to-day -day updates and concern early in 2011. Uh, and I heard what you said to my colleague, uh, Mrs. Brooks, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but showing that Libya, and for that matter, Benghazi, belonged to you in 2011. Um, it was yours, so to speak. And from your own records uh, that we have, we saw uh, a, a drop in your interest uh, in Libya and Benghazi in 2012. Not only do the records show your drop in interest in Benghazi, it was even noticed by your own staff. Um, I want to point this out to you. I say this because I want to point you to an email uh, in early February 2012 uh, between two staffers at your Libya desk uh, that says you didn't know whether we still even had a presence in Benghazi. Um, let's not use my words. Let's use, use theirs. This can be found at tab 31. Um, the email says, and it's dated February 9, 2012, uh, one writes to the other about an encounter that she had with you. Um, quote, also, the secretary asked last week if we still have a presence in Benghazi. I think she would be upset to hear, yes, uh, we do, but because we don't have enough security, they are on lockdown, end quote. Um, and I say that um, this is very troubling to me uh, because it raises several issues that I'd like to ask you about. I'm struck by the first part, quote, the secretary asked last week if we still have a presence in Benghazi. Now, you pointed out to Mrs. Brooks in her last line of questioning, um, based upon the, the email stacks here, that you, you engaged in a lot of conversations and briefings. Um, so I'm assuming that this conversation with this member of your staff took place in one of those briefings, but then she uh, sent this email uh, asking, um, um, about this. So, so how can this be that two of your staffers are emailing about whether or not you even knew that we had a presence in Benghazi in 2012 with all your interest in Libya in 2011, including your trip in October of 2011, and that months later we come to find out that you didn't even know if we had a presence there? Well, I, I can't comment on, on what has been reported. Of course, I knew we had a presence in Benghazi. I knew that we were evaluating uh, what that presence should be, how long it should continue. Um, and I knew exactly what we were doing uh, in Libya. And I think it's important, since you, you have some very legitimate questions about what we were doing. You know, the United States played a major role in the first election that the Libyan people had in 51 years. It was a successful election by every count, and they voted for moderates. They voted for the kind of people they wanted to govern them. We had a very successful uh, effort that the United States supported, getting rid of Gaddafi's remaining uh, chemical weapons, which we led and supported. Uh, the United Nations and others in being able to do. We were combating the proliferation of weapons. That's one of the reasons why there was a CIA uh, presence in Benghazi, because we were trying to figure out how to get those weapons out of the wrong hands and get them uh, collected uh, in a way and destroyed. Uh, and in fact, uh, we began reducing those heavy weapon stocks. We were, you know, working on providing transition assistance to the Libyans. I met with the Libyans, I telephoned with the Libyans, I saw the Libyans all during this period, and it was hard because a lot of them knew what they wanted, but they didn't know how to get from where they were to that goal. And we did an enormous amount of work. My two deputies, Tom Nides and Bill Burns, went to Libya. Other officials in the State Department went to Libya. So there was a constant uh, continuing effort that I led to try to see what we could do to help. Now, one of the problems we faced is that the Libyans did not really feel that they could welcome 
a peacekeeping mission. They couldn't welcome foreign troops to their uh, to their soil. That made it really difficult. And Secretary it didn't Clinton. have to be American troops. It could have been troops from anywhere in the world under a UN mandate that might have helped them begin to secure uh, their country. Secretary Clinton, if I may, I, I hear what you're saying, but this email says something very, very well, I different. I, you know, I can't speak to that. I can just tell you what I was doing, and I was sure, doing a but lot. These, this was your staff, and I, I, it has Who, to make me wonder the, if, if they had this conversation with you, why well, they would make it up. But I want to move on. Uh, this email, um, you know, makes me wonder about the vision for Benghazi because they're asking if you, they're saying that uh, you asked if we still had a presence, but um, if you, you know, we look at the second part of the email, quote, and I think she would be upset to hear, yes, we do. I, you uh, know, I, I Congresswoman, I'm sorry. I have no, no recollection of or no knowledge of. Of Please course. Please turn to tab 31. Well, it's right I, there. I, I, I trust that you have read it, but I also tell you that we had a presence in Benghazi. We had members of the administration and Congress visiting Benghazi. So, of course, I knew we had a presence in Benghazi. I can't speak to what someone either heard or misheard. But I think what's important, and I understand the, the underlying uh, point of your question, is what were we doing about right. Libya and I, and after Gaddafi fell? That and that's part. what I'm trying to explain to you about yes, what we were doing. I want to get to the second part of the email that suggests that, that we were in lockdown, that you would have been upset to know yes, heard the first answer, part of your answer, but that we were in lockdown. And you've said on numerous occasions, including in your opening statement, uh, in point number one, you know, America must lead and we must represent in dangerous places, quote, they can't do their jobs for us in bunkers. And essentially, uh, what we know is that there weren't the required number of security on the ground in order for the individual to even move about the country to provide you with what you have uh, reiterated on numerous occasions as being very important at that time, which is political reporting. Well, could, could you tell me who is, uh, who are the names on this email that you're talking sure, about? Sure, I can turn to tab 31. You have a book in front of you. It is um, Alice Abdallah, uh, and um, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Evgenia uh, Sadareas, is that correct? They, they were not on my staff. I'm not in any way, um, you know, contradicting what they think they heard or what they heard somebody say. But the people that I can dealt you tell me with, who they were if they were not on your staff? They were not on my. They were they they were in the State Department along with thousands of other people. They were not part of the Secretary staff. But I get what you're saying, Congresswoman, and I want to focus on this. I think it's a fair and important question. The facility in Benghazi was a temporary facility. There had been no decision made as to whether or not it would be permanent. It was not even a consulate. You know, our embassy was in Tripoli. Obviously, much of the work that we were doing was going through the embassy. Um, the, there was, a, there was a, a very a vigorous discussion on the part of people um, who were responsible for making a recommendation about Benghazi as to what form of consulate, what form of facility it should be. Uh, Chris Stevens believed uh, that it should be a formal consulate. Um, but that was something that had to be uh, worked out, and there had not yet been a decision at the time that the attack took place. So it was not uh, a permanent facility. And, you know, there were a number of questions that people were asking about whether it could or should be. Well, I want to drill down on the security issue, but I also want to say it's frustrating for us here on this panel asking these questions to hear you in your opening statement talk about the responsibility you took for all 70 plus thousand employees, mm -hmm. yet I read you an email that is a conversation between two of those employees, and it seems as though you're just kind of brushing it off as not no, having any knowledge. I'm just saying it, it, I have no recollection of it, and it doesn't correspond with the facts of what we were doing on a regular basis. Well, if we can talk for just a minute about the security, I've got a few seconds left. Um, in 2011, during the revolution, uh, then envoy um, Stevens had 10 agents with him on the ground. Uh, in Benghazi. And then we know in 2012, where the security situation had deteriorated even further, um, there were only three agents assigned to Benghazi. Again, um, can't even move anybody off of the facility to do the necessary political reporting. And I, my question is, you know, 
why did you not acknowledge, because of your interest in 2011, the importance of having those security officers there to do what was so important to you, which was the political um, reporting then in 2011, 10, and when an ambassador was there, three, and he brought two of his own the night of the attack, which would meet the requisite five, but there was really only three there at any given time. So if you could address that, again, I'm running a little short on time. Well, he did have five with him on uh, September 11th, and— Well, he brought two, right? He brought two well, with him. There were three there, and there right, were supposed but, to be but five the, there. But the point was they were personal security, so they were there to secure him. So, yes, he did bring two, and when he got there, he had five. Can you address the, the discrepancy? The day before, on September 10th, he went into Benghazi. He went to uh, a luncheon with um, leading— um, civic leaders, business leaders in Benghazi. Uh, so he felt very comfortable. It was his decision. Uh, ambassadors do not have to seek permission uh, from the State Department to travel around the country that they are assigned to. He decided to go to Benghazi by taking two security officers with him and having three there. He had the requisite five that had been the subject of uh, discussion uh, between the embassy and the State Department security professionals. I'm, I'm not going to in any way suggest that uh, he, he or the embassy got everything they requested. We know that they didn't from the Accountability Review Board, from uh, investigations that were done by the Congress. Uh, we know that there were a lot of uh, discussions about what was needed, particularly in Benghazi, uh, and that uh, uh, the day that uh, he died, he had five security officers. Um, a lot of security professionals who have reviewed uh, this matter, even those who um, are critical uh, that the State Department uh, did not do enough, uh, have said that the kind of attack that took place would have been very difficult to repel. That's what we have to learn from, Congresswoman. You know, there, there, are many, there are many lessons going back to Beirut, going back to Tehran and the takeover of our embassy and going all the way through these years. And sometimes we learn lessons and we, we actually act and we do the best we can. And there's a perfect, terrible example of that with respect to what happened in Benghazi. Certainly. And cert my time has expired and we'll certainly never know what would have what the outcome would have been if there had been more agents that night. I yield Well, back. that's not what the professionals, that's not what the experts in security have concluded. If you read the accountability review board. I have read it, Secretary Clinton, and it says that security was grossly inadequate. Well, it said that there were deficiencies within two bureaus in the State Department, which we have moved to uh, correct. And it also pointed out that the diplomatic security officers who were there acted heroically they, there was not one single uh, question about what they did, and they were overrun. Uh, and it's, uh, it was unfortunate that the agreement we had with the CIA annex, and when those brave uh, men showed up, that it was also not enough. Certainly, and we'll discuss this more. I have to yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair will now recognize the gentleman from Washington.